everyone. I'll be showing you the results of a fade test that I did back in 2015, I think it was, 2015, 2014, right around there. Since this script is rather long and I can't memorize it all, I'm going to be reading it here, so you'll have to bear with me. I live far down south, basically right around the border, and down here the hottest, driest, and most harsh month is August. It's when we get the most sunlight, and it's also the strongest or hottest and has been in the past when we've gotten 115, 120 degree temperatures down here. I put these paint samples out for a straight seven days. I was only going to do it for three but decided to stretch it to seven when they performed so well. I made sure that they got direct sunlight with no shade at all for the full time the sun was out. Sun up to sunset in the most bare and, at the time, most dirt-filled part of the yard. So they got the harshest, hottest, and most cruel conditions possible, and shockingly survived very well, even the ones that did fade. They got a tad rained on at or near the end, and a few have or had a bit of bird poop on them to show for it all. Thankfully, no birds decided to come by and rain on it like nobody's business. The reason I wanted to do such a harsh, real-world, quote-unquote, test was because I wanted to know what watercolors, if any, that are produced today could or would be able to stand up to, say, about 30 years of light hitting them. Whether that be artificial home light, gallery light, or plain daylight. I figured the closest thing I could come to replicating, say, 15 to 30 years of daylight in perfect gallery conditions, or even household conditions, would be to make some paint swatches and put them outside under direct, harsh sunlight for as long as possible. Honestly, I didn't expect any of them to last past one day, much less three days, thinking I'd be forced to take them in after about three days because of how faded they would be. I was shocked in a very, very good way. So I thought I was going to have to give a totally different disclaimer, saying how the test was actually far too harsh. Thankfully, instead, I get to give this one. You know house paint? Well, it fades, cracks, chips, then starts falling off no matter where you live. In the far north or down south, it all goes through pretty much the same things. So that puts it all in perspective. House paint that is made to be outside and not only take all kinds of weather conditions, but also years of having direct sunlight beating down on it, fades and chips and is ruined by nature itself. But even house paint fades and that is made to be in direct sunlight year round. So if even the most weather resistant paint that anyone can buy and use on their house can't take a good few years worth of sun, then expecting watercolors, which are made to be used indoors under ideal conditions and hung and viewed in ideal conditions, expecting them to be able to withstand direct outdoor sunlight for quite some time as well, it puts it all in perspective. It's kind of ridiculous. Thankfully, all these paints, with the exception of about two children's paints, performed so well that I'm able to say this and give this disclaimer, rather than the test was too hard, etc, etc. All the paints came out excellent for what they went through, in my opinion, and I would truly like to test them further at some point in time in the future, if I ever get the chance. But for now, just know that for watercolors, not meant to take the intense sunlight, they did exceptionally well, even the children's paints. And actually, there's one children's paint, Praying, which outdid even the most expensive paints, so. I painted this on legal-sized computer paper and used plain old tap water, not any kind of fancy water or paper, so no distilled or filtered anything. I'd truly like to try doing this again, but on 100% cotton rag archival paper with, like, filtered water and fancy nice brushes, just to see if using different kinds of paper and water and brushes will make any kind of a difference at all. And I would write down the kind of clear spray paint I was using for shellac and even possibly put extra coats on, such as 
covering one piece with thick puzzle glue by that one company that does decoupage. I think they're called decoupage. I'd also clearly label every color and everything and do a better job organizing everything since I know what I'd be doing. But currently I don't have the money to do retests and unless I or someone starts a GoFundMe page for me to earn the funds to get fancy archival paper, etc, etc, then I don't think that'll happen. I do want to try this again, but next time I want to put the paint out for a full month and see what happens. In fact, I would use the paint swatches that I, that I already have and see how much more they can take. It certainly would be a good test of the computer paper, which was kind of yellowing, definitely curling, and a bit crumbly dry when I finally had to bring them all in. Depending upon how well one month goes, I would try it for three months and see what the results were. I figure if it can last through three months of some of the strongest sun and dry heat that this place has, then this paint is definitely going to last through a full 50 to 100 years of having house lights and even seasonal fall, winter, summer, or spring only, you know, just that seasoned sunlight hitting it for decades without end. Or at least I would hope so. On a side note, one surprising thing I found was that the marker ink I used to draw the outlines and label everything was faded after about three days. It was so terrible that by the fourth day there was not one bit of writing anywhere to be seen. It had hard, bleh, it had entirely disappeared. So permanent marker, while you may think it's permanent, it's not. So watch out for that. I found out that BIC, that their permanent markers faded far faster and worse than Sharpie. Sharpie was still there after about four days, but just barely, to the point where I could no longer read any of my labeling. Bic, though, Bic had long since disappeared, far worse than invisible ink. It was all so bad, I had to relabel everything. And when it comes to the Sharpie, uh, it turns out that was almost like an archaeological dig, like you could see there was graffiti here once. <laughs> So Sharpie, while it might not have disappeared entirely so that you had never written anything on there in the first place like Bic was, uh, Sharpie was so bad you, you couldn't really make out what was written there. It was horrible. So both of them aren't good when it comes to archival items, but they are ink. And ink is known for fading, or at least it supposedly is. So there you go. Although recently I ended up finding out that uh, some of this Bombay ink, India ink, that doesn't seem to fade at all. That's really shocking. That one blew my mind, but it's also permanent, so I don't know. Maybe that makes a difference anyway. So just to let everyone know, I noticed that the camera wasn't able to pick up some of the subtleties and nuances that are more than blatant in real life when it comes to actually looking at these uh, paint swatches on camera. So I'll be explaining the swatches as I go along here. I didn't doctor the pictures in any way to show what they look like in real life. I just don't have the money, aka editing programs and know-how to do so, and really I'm too damn lazy anyway. So yeah, I wouldn't even if I could. As for the disclaimer portion, of this video. Uh, also, I am not paid, nor am I in collusion with any company, business, corporation, conglomerate, etc. I bought all these products over the course of many years throughout my life, and it's all my private personal paints that I'm testing here. So I don't have any stake in any of them, except now I know what not to paint my portraits with and what to paint my portraits with. I'm entirely independent, and well, the results will speak to this. I will admit right here that I do at times can or will sound like a walking advertisement because I'll come upon a new product that I will love. Every artist and person it seems is like this, I've found, and I'm no exception. Everyone comes across new ideas, products, things in their life, even people. And suddenly, that's all I can think of, talk about, breathe. 
And well, I'm the same way. Though I do have to say, after the results I got, I really am thinking about trying and becoming a like sponsor or whatever for praying because that watercolor just blew me away. I've done a fade test on their colored pencils and sadly they didn't pan out. But their traditional watercolors, wow. I was in awe. And uh, I will say here that uh, even though praying colored pencils didn't really pan out, um, I was before and I still am kind of, uh, you know, praising them and pushing them as the colored pencils to start out with if you don't have the money to say even buy Prismacolor pencils or any of these other colored pencils. If, if you can't find, thankfully now, uh, currently they have all these really rather good colored pencils uh, for all these adult coloring books. So that's really good. So any colored pencils that you can find for adult coloring books, they're not all done the same. But uh, there's there's some, most of them are pretty bad, but there's some really good ones out there when it comes to just starting out in the line of colored pencils. And definitely get those, uh, but across the board, praying I think is the best way to go. They're better than Prismacolor. They have deeper, more vibrant colors. The unfortunate thing is, is that those colored pencils, along with a lot of others, uh, depending upon the color in the batch, the color won't necessarily stick around. It will fade away. But uh, that's onto a whole nother video, so I'm not even going to deal with that. Anyway, uh, well, on to the video. The first ones that I'm showing here are Crazy Art, Crayola, Praying, and a pan set of Artist's Loft watercolor paints. These are all extremely cheap, and except for the Artist's Loft, they are name brand children's paints. I've seen these trashed and treated terribly by so many people in so many videos, I just wanted to give them all a chance to redeem themselves. I wanted to do these first because I figure and hope almost anyone in any country anywhere can get their hands on these paints, and I hope that they are pretty universally recognizable. It may take some digging and driving around depending on where you live, but for the most part you can find an old, dusty, straight from the 70s case of these things laying around in the most unlikely places. Like seriously, I've found old paint cases of these things in grocery stores and old convenience stores, and the copyright date had gone out in the 1980s, for real. So for anyone just venturing in art and low on dough, then I figure these are the most commonplace items that everyone starts, since they're usually the paints that everyone at some point in their lives have looked down and seen on a bottom shelf somewhere. That, and these are the paints that all the more affluent parents uh, got their kids. Everyone had an old, nasty case of Crayola or some other off-brand Rose Art in My Day paints laying around. These are the kind of paints that we also buy ourselves when we're wanting to reminisce. So I'll be doing these first. Sadly, I do have to say right away that the Crazy Art and Crayola did not make it. After three days, I had to recall both of them. I was shocked, though, to find the others fared well. So well, in fact, that I'll now recommend them to everyone. But anyway, on with it. Crazy art. Now the first one up, um, now the first ones up are the currently cheapest of them all, the crazy art ones. C-R-A-Z-A-R-T, crazy art, or crazy art, I don't know. These seem to be a replacement for the rose art, a brand that was very popular and was around everywhere back in the day. Today, it's crazy art. And well, they didn't fare well at all, but you do have to take into account the fact that they're the cheapest and they're children's paints. The shellac side didn't fare much better, if at all. A few of the colors are still visible, and a couple are a bit darker in the more thick spots where the paint built up, but overall shellacking didn't seem to make much of a difference. After three days, I had to pull these. The majority of them had faded to the point of invisible, and I therefore didn't allow them to continue. At least three of the colors disappeared completely, and two others are so gone they might as well be considered invisible also. 
all of them morphed so that you can't tell what they're supposed to be in the first place. And, well, I kind of feel bad having to even describe any of this. I really like this brand and even painted a photographic reality kind of picture with them. But in the end, they didn't last when I put them under strong sunlight. But once again, they are the cheapest of the name brand children's paints, so yeah, I love the colors, but you can't really expect much. In my opinion, I'd buy these for your kids if you don't care if what they paint will last and won't be hanging it on the fridge. And best of all, if the paint spills and gets on anything, such as the walls or rug, don't worry, after enough time, the paint will fade away entirely. Unless the area the paint spills in is entirely void of light of any kind whatsoever, and maybe time too, <laughs> this paint will fade away. Heck, if you can't get it out of their clothes, then I'd strongly suggest just sticking their clothes outside for about three days under, you know, direct intense sunlight, and believe me, the paint will fade away. <laughs> It'll be completely gone. <laughs> Ahem. Anyway, on to the next set of paints. Crayola! Now, Crayola faded to the point of nearly invisible also, and at least four to five of the colors basically disappeared too, but not to the no trace extent that the crazy art colors did. All the colors morphed so that you can't tell what they were to begin with. And once again, shellacking didn't make much, if any, kind of difference. I also used this paint to paint a photographic reality picture, and well, once again, I'm disappointed. Sadly, I had to pull these after three days also, because they were so terribly faded. If I had left them out, then there wouldn't have been anything left to photograph. But once again, they're children's paints, far better known and spread around than other brands, I think. But they're still of such poor quality that unless you don't want your children's artworks lasting, I wouldn't really be buying these. So, since there's really not much to say about these two brands, I'll move on to the next one, Artist's Loft. I'm moving on to this one because I'm going to save the very most exceptional one for last. Artist's Loft! <laughs> now the Artist's Loft fared exceptionally well, except for the fact that... Well, I guess I painted the paint on far too thick. It ended up crumbling and flaking off so badly that there was virtually no paint left. There's been paint flakes in my room, my house, everywhere ever since I did this, and I think I'm going to just discard the fade test for Artist's Loft after this video simply because it's creating such a headache for me. The side that was shellacked fared better, but not by much. As for fading, there wasn't that much. It did fade by a fair amount, and especially on the no shellac side. The, sh the side that got shellacked is at least a good step to step and a half darker and vibrant, just more around than the side that isn't shellacked. Overall, Artist's Law faded, but not by much at all, at least on the shellac side. But I think that simply because I used such terribly thick paint on it, it held onto its color fairly well, seeing that it's such a cheap set of paints. So these are definitely a good buy, and really, these are so crumbly, I think if I ever do this again, I'll go ahead and redo this test so that I can get a more accurate idea of what these paints can offer, if they're still around by that time. Now for the one I was saving. Praying! Now, I just want to make a distinction right away here. I'm talking about the 8 and 16 sets of classic colors that come in the oval, white, opaque plastic container. Not the set that's advertised as, quote, washable, unquote, and currently comes with a see-through lid. I have not tested those, but I have tested the ones that were around for probably decades now. The ones that come in a white, opaque container, and 
you know, the paint comes in these little oval, you know, oval containers. They're the ones that I'm sure anyone could get as far back as the late 70s, early 80s at least. Now this one also being a cheap children's paint and a well-known brand name, I'm truly hoping will be available almost anywhere. Praying to my shock outperformed two to three hundred dollar, that's US dollar, paints. It did not fade, it did not disappear, it did not crack or warp, it did not twist or morph in its colors, it didn't darken, nothing. Nothing at all. It stayed true to its original painting, colors, tone, depth, vibrancy, brightness, everything all the way through. There wasn't one single change. Sadly, I can't say the same for Caron Dosh or Holbin. The Caron Dosh, uh, actually, they faded far worse than the Holbin, and Caron Dosh are some of the most expensive professional artists' watercolors that I know of when you're buying a set, if you're buying one of the sets, you know. Holbin is also an extremely expensive professional uh, adult set of watercolors that you can get, and those two faded. Praying didn't. These praying paints are children's paints and the kind of paint that I've had since childhood. They can be found at nearly all major retail stores across America at least, and I'm figuring in Mexico and Canada to a certain extent. I hope they're all over the whole world. They are cheap, at most costing only about $12 for a full set of 16 colors, at least on Amazon currently in the year 2017. They come with a far superior brush compared to both the Crazy Art and Crayola paints. Though I will say the brush, even though the bristles are very good, and I think might actually be actual protein fiber, meaning true animal hair, the hairs do or can fall out quite quickly and badly, to the point where if you do use one of their brushes, it can end up going bald on you by the end of the painting. That usually doesn't happen with one of their brushes that comes with their sets, but it has happened to me a few times. That's why I suggest if you're going to buy, you know, even if it's just for your kid and, you know, whether it be for your kid or yourself, definitely buy yourself just a $5 pack of craft brushes when you buy yourself some, you know, watercolor paints like this because the craft brushes even though they're syn synthetic bristles, you know, uh, the bristles are made out of plastic, they are so much better. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if they say that they're for acrylic, buy them anyway. The craft brushes are so, so, so much better than any of the brushes that you ever get with these children's sets of watercolors. Um, and, you know, it'll actually help your kid out a whole lot because you can't really paint very well with those cheap, you know, stiff bristled pure plastic brushes. You really need craft brushes that are meant to bend and but spring back yet have strength and smoothness, you know, that adults use. You really need a good brush like that. Otherwise you just can't produce a good painting. It's just the truth. Anyway, but best of all, if you look them up on Amazon right now in the year 2017, you can get them for around six or seven dollars for a set of 16 and you can even order replacements for individual colors that you run out of. Unfortunately you have to order a full whack load of them in bulk about 10 to 12 at a time and they cost quite a bit about 10 to 12 US dollars if you're gonna order a replacement you know for the each individual color but if you're teaching a class this can be well worth it. Personally, I've never truly liked or enjoyed the colors of praying paints. They're just not my thing. I really just don't like the color palette. But after seeing the results of the fade test, I was flabbergasted. I had no idea this could even happen. I mean, the colors, once again, didn't fade, morph, warp, nothing cracked or crumbled. There was no difference between what I first painted. Uh, there was no difference between when I first painted them on the paper and when I brought them in. It was and still is truly jaw-dropping. These praying paints outperformed some of the most expensive watercolor paint that I have so far. There's only a slight hint, barely a hint of color fade between the shellac and unshellac side. And this is the part you can't really see on camera. 
Unfortunately, I don't know photography well enough to really zoom in and be able to show up close and personal all the colors side by side, but I'm not sure if those colors would come through honestly anyway, since all cameras, it seems, on automatic, the only way I know how to take a picture, morph and change the colors, either fading them out or making them look different in one way or another, or darkening them or washing them out. Usually, I see this in my camera with purples. They come out very blue looking, very odd. So, taking a picture doesn't really work, so that's why I mean by having to explain the differences verbally. Because you can't really see it unless you're in real life looking at the things. But in real life, with these praying paints, you can see a mere hint of difference between the shellac side and the unshellac side. The shellac side fared a bit better, being a hint darker and more vibrant. That, and of course, the shellac side fared through the rain far better. The only thing I can see out of them after staring at them for quite a while here is that the magenta-like purple on the bottom row, that one, did fade a slight bit. But other than that, there was no change at all. So for praying watercolor paints, I'd say buy them. If you're starting out a hobbyist, if you're in a nursing home, retired, if you want to try painting but don't want to shell out for it, heck, get them just for the sake of getting them. These things are so darn good. I'm truly and really shocked, and I invite everyone to also do their own fade tests. You know, stating where in the world or U.S., what have you, they did them, how long they left the tests out, what time of year and what kind of sunlight, was it sun up to sunset, and the like. I'd really like to find out what other people get. I'd like, uh, I definitely want other people to run these paints and all the others through their own tests and find out what, you know, what these paints can endure, what they can go through, and everything. I think it'd be really interesting. But yeah, from here on out, I'm totally going to preach praying, because it just blows me away. It's a semi-moist cake. Yeah. It's a semi-moist cake, just like many professional $500 and up paints. So they re-wet real easily. And they don't dry too easily or quickly, just like the professional paints. But just like professional paints, you can buy the colors individually. Though there is a drawback of having to buy the colors in bulk, but still. And the paint itself is the perfect learning tool. It acts and it reacts dead stamp like the through the nose expensive professional paints you order as an artist. I was so blown away by them I truly and honestly wonder if praying is actually a professional paint that's being marketed as a children's paint. As for washability it's watercolor so most if not all watercolor I just hope that after I put this video out, if this video does get watched and become well known in the art world, um, I just hope that praying doesn't change the recipe at all. <laughs> but yeah, buy praying, buy praying, buy praying if you know you want your stuff to last. Literally, it's it's better than the expensive expensive paint. Seriously. Uh, as for washability, it's watercolor, so most if not all watercolors are rewettable. I was shocked, I will say, about how rewettable these paints are. Seeing that all my paints were sprinkled on some, at least a little bit, by what we call, quote, rain down here. It's more like God sneezing on the earth. These were the only ones to really show it, to the extent that I wondered if these paints had gotten personally sprinkled on. Uh, all the other paints that I did uh, fade test swatches on, they didn't uh, do what you're seeing in the visuals here, which is why the unshellac side didn't look so great and it was kind of messy. You know, those were little literal raindrops that dried on the page there. And uh, none of the other paints really did that. So these praying paints are extremely rewettable, probably because they're children's and they're supposed to be able to easily wash out. So if you are going to use these praying paints, shellac whatever you do just shellac it it will last but shellac it so that you know so that someone like God doesn't decide to come along and sneeze on your painting and ruin the thing <laughs> 
But aside from the few downturns that I mentioned, these paints are the very best. And after this fade test, I'd recommend them to anyone. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, I wanted to do these cheap children's paints first because, to me, they're the most valuable and important. These paints are the ones I would consider for a dirt cheap art supplies list, and I really wanted and needed to know if they would and could stand up to the test of time. I figure everyone has access to them and has, you know, they've used them at some point or time in their life. So if you or anyone you know has pictures made out of this kind of paint, now you know what to do with it. Shellac it well and save it in a dark place away from sunlight. Unless, of course, it's made with praying. Then you can leave it out and admire it as the masterpiece it is. In the next video, I'll be testing more medium-priced watercolors. Koi, Reeves, De La Roni, along with another artist's loft, but this time it's going to be from the tubes. It's not going to be the chalky little cakes, so that's good. I don't like the chalky little cakes I found. Um, and well, that's it. I hope you have a good day, and I hope to see you soon. Bye!